Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Shelley Plum, and I'd like to welcome you all back to this segment of From the Hip. Today, I was thinking about something important. I was thinking about my grandmother, and my grandmother, and I'm getting chills just thinking about it, was such a lovely woman, and a lovely woman that battled cancer. She battled breast cancer, and I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because it was such a trying time for her when she was going through this, and it was a trying time for our family. And it's hard when you're going through something emotional like that to really know where you can reach out to for help. Today, we are extremely fortunate to have the founder of Allie's Alliance. Now, Allie's Alliance, for those of you not familiar, is really a cancer directory. And it is a resource for people out there who are either going through cancer or have loved ones or friends or you know anyone that's going through the cancer process. It is a, a, a resource, a resource for all that are out there. So we have David Cowan with us, and David Cowan is the founder of Allie's Alliance, which is, David, correct me if I'm wrong, it is the ultimate resource or directory for cancer uh, resources. Am I right? That is what we aspire to be and uh, across the country. We are essentially to date ourselves a kind of a yellow pages for cancer, uh, but we have a directory online of resources and help and support and just all manner of guidance for people battling cancer as well as the caregivers that take care of them on a day-to-day -day basis. That, it's incredible because, and I meant what I said when I was talking earlier about when you're going through that emotional process of, of going, you know, through it, it's sometimes hard to know where you can reach out for a reputable resource. Am I right? Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, the, the, the genesis or the beginning of Allie's Alliance started really in the beginning of that journey. It started back in 2010 when my wife Allison was diagnosed okay. with a very rare and very aggressive cancer. And the thing that is probably so important for people to remember is that in that moment when you receive the diagnosis, you are scared, Yes. you are confused, um, you really don't know which way you're going, and you don't speak the language, and you have no idea where that road is going. So it just is so important. And in our case, we received the diagnosis from a doctor who was not an oncologist. Oh, is that right? Okay. And you know, we were involved in, what, in, in a diagnostic procedure looking for something entirely different. Okay. And he came into the recovery room afterwards and basically said, we found a tumor. As far as we know, it's malignant and this is serious and you guys need to figure it out and he turned around and went walked out the is door. Is that right? Just yes. kind of left you with right. and I I can only imagine how devastating that must be. Terrifying. And 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 you probably went home and, and we're like, "Well, what do I do now?" Am that, I right? That is exactly what happened. And as a matter of fact, we went on the internet like most people these days would do yes. and we spent several days looking for therapies and everything else only to find out that the cancer that we were dealing with was incredibly rare and there was no known oh, therapy for it. Right. And so um, it, it just began a long journey that was, that was very, very difficult. We battled the cancer for 10 and a half months. And I can tell you that that moment of, of being lost and confused doesn't go away. It, no. it reoccurs day after day after day as new things come up and new challenges come up and you're looking for what's the next thing. That's you know, right. What, what, what is it that we need to do next? The, and that to me, as you know, I, I have a background in medicine, podiatric right. medicine, and I do know how detrimental stress is to the immune system in the body. Absolutely. And I, day in, day out, you, you, with that anxiety of, oh my goodness, what, what, how do I deal with this? Cannot, your wife should have been focused on getting better right. and not that. So my hat is off to you with regards to this. So let's go into what Allie's Alliance provides. For the viewers out there that really know nothing about Allie's Alliance, they were to go on your website, what would they find? Well, Allie's Alliance is a, an online directory. It's probably the simplest way to describe it. The thing that makes it special and unique nationwide is that it's geographically focused so that you can connect or a caregiver or a patient survivor right. can go on the website and put in their zip code or their city 
and then search within concentric circles, distances, so they can say, I want to know what's 10 miles away from me. I want to know what's 25, 50, 100 miles away. But they can focus on their geography and what resources are available close to them yes. that can impact them where they live. And so they can go in there, put their zip code, how far they want to travel, what mm -hmm. stage of the battle that they're in. And then there is a pull down menu that you can either just look for everything available in your area or you can filter down and say, I'm looking for a nutritionist. I'm looking for a cancer support group. I'm looking for an alternative medicine person. I'm looking for financial help. Right. You know, we have all of these things in the directory. We have 34 categories of service that- 34. 34 categories That's of incredible. service. Of, of things that, are, are, that, that speak and assist the patient, caregiver, survivor where they live. And this is everything from mainstream doctors to alternatives, to um, support therapies like nutrition and physical therapy, but social workers, nurse navigators, uh, and then more specifically to get to the day-to-day -day challenges, we have cancer support groups where people will oftentimes offer assistance getting to a doctor's appointment. When okay. you're too sick yes. to get off the couch because right. of chemotherapy, then or radiation you know the treatments for cancer are tough yes no how and, can you possibly drive yourself anywhere you need to go and all too often yes. you've got a very very can't. ill person mm. that's struggling to do that yes. um we have we have people in these support groups that are willing to go to a doctor's appointment with you and listen to provide an extra set of ears because when you're battling cancer you're not hearing straight right you know you've got uh, you've got an emotional investment mm -hmm. in that conversation and, and oftentimes your mind is drifting and yes. not focusing. Right. And so uh, cancer support groups are a huge benefit in this regard. And then we have pastoral help, not only for the survivor, but for the caregiver when things don't go well. Yes. And then there's, uh, there's uh, mental health care workers that, that, that deal with those issues on both sides. And one of the things that a lot of people don't think about is just the stress of remission. You know, people always think, well, we got to remission. And so, you know, that's, you know, the exhale and everything's yeah. great and wonderful. But it's tough because you're always I, wondering. You know what? And, and in many respects, that in some ways is more stressful. And, and the reason I say this is I have a very good friend right now who is battling cancer. All right. And she is blessed and so grateful to be in remission now, but I see her firsthand. Every time she goes to that doctor's appointment, right. you, can, you can see it in her body language. And I, I cannot blame her. I, it, it really has got to be one thing that is weighing on your mind, for sure. Always, yes. always. It's, 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 it plays into your everyday life. It's there when you get that first cup of coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. and it's there you know, when you say your prayers at night. And it's just, it, it's, it's a stress. You know, and there's, there are things to help with it. There are people to help with it. Yes. But if you don't know where to look and you don't know where to, what to ask for, yes. it can be tough. Okay, so I, I must ask. So we're, we're in South Florida. We uh, are. But a lot of our viewers are across the world, actually. So mm -hmm. is Allie's Alliance only a resource for people that are in South Florida? How far do you extend? We, our base of operations or our mission is the, the 48 contiguous states. Okay. We are coast to coast, corner to corner. Gotcha. And, and so uh, while we started in Florida, you know, we launched in South Florida. And so we have a lot of resources and a lot of users down here. We have resources in all 50 states. And this really speaks to one of the key messages that I want to get out is that we are always wanting to build and expand and grow the directory of service providers. And this includes, you know, as I've, I don't want to get overly redundant, but doctors and alternative uh, medical providers to uh, support services yes. and, and mental health care and, and logistical help close to home. Any, anybody, any person, any group, any business that provides service to the cancer community should be listed in the Allies Alliance directory, and you can do so at no cost, and that's probably the, the, that's the, key, the key thing. Yes. You know, free is free. Free is free, uh, yes. And, and so if you go to the website, there's a link there. Uh, it's pretty easy to find that you can uh, join the list and you fill out a single page form and, and we review it to make sure that you're doing what you say you're doing. Right. And then it gets approved and it goes right into the directory. 
you know what, I can't, I, I, let me emphasize, I mean, for all you viewers out there, if you are, have a loved one suffering from cancer or you're going through it yourself, I mean, an incredible resource. Yeah. And for those people out there that are caregivers with regards to either a physician or involved in cancer rehab in any way, for example, uh, get involved. I mean, it is very, very important. And um, I'm getting chills right now because people need this. They Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And we salute you for, I mean, giving back to your community the way you are. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. And, and you know, to pick up on something that you just said, you know, we need to expand our presence nationwide. Yes. You know, this is so important. Like I said, we, we have right now, we have thousands of people visiting the website every month. About 29%, 30% of them come from South Florida. Okay. We need to spread that across the country. Country. Absolutely. You know, and so we're always looking for people that have a heart for what we're doing that can form a little nucleus someplace, some some city yeah. somewhere, you know, San Antonio, Texas, or South uh, Southern California, or up in the Northwest, or up in the Northeast. Somebody that has a heart for what we're doing, sees the value of what we're doing, is willing to be an ambassador right. for what we're doing. It, you know, nothing. You know, they, they talk about elections and, and retail politics. Well, this is retail. Yes. You know, this needs to be person to person to get the word out. And it's just so important to make those connections, to make sure that the caregivers and the survivors know that there is this resource that they can access at no cost and totally anonymously. And then on the other side, to let the providers know yes. that they can list what they do at no cost to make it easier for the people that need them to find them. Yes. It's just so important. It is. It is. It's providing hope. That's it what is. it's doing, yeah. for sure. I think we will all agree that this is an amazing, amazing resource. So for people out there that want to know more about you and, and maybe are struggling, they're going through and they're really not sure where to reach out with regards to cancer treatment, for example, what words of advice could you leave them with? The, the first thing I would say to everybody, and, and, I, and I have to start with, I hate this, but I have to do a disclaimer to start with, but I'm not a medical person. I have no medical training beyond basic first aid. But I, I want to be very clear that when you get a diagnosis of, of cancer or when your loved one gets a diagnosis of cancer, um, there's, a, there's a, a hint of panic yes, that, 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 that comes in. And I would urge anybody, and there, there's a lot of things going on in the, in, the, in the medical cancer community that drive this, but I would urge everyone to take a breath and remember that you were alive when you walked in there and that and you need to pause and you need to talk to people that you love and that you trust. Yes. The, one of the things that's very, very important is to keep in mind that whoever is the first person that you talk to, okay, is gonna provide a, a certain solution or a certain treatment or a yes. certain course of action. Right. And very often that course of action may preclude other opportunities down oh, the road. That's interesting. That is so, a very, very valid point. And, and we uh, really need to think about that. Right, so if, you know, the, if the first person that you talk to is a surgeon, then that's the road that they're gonna take or radiation oncology or whatever right. the case may be. At one point during my wife's treatment, we were looking at an alternative that had just been approved as a trial from the FDA, but she had to be chemo free for 30 days oh. before she was eligible for yes. that. And so these things all impact the journey. The other thing is, is to, when I was going through this as a caregiver, the, uh, I was always pestering the doctors for what is the cutting edge thing? Who's yeah. doing the most relevant work right now yes, on this? Of course. And I pestered them and pestered them and pestered them and ultimately I got a, a guest you know, uh, log in for a place where they were publishing these papers, which I did not yeah. understand most of. Uh, but one of the things that we've done on the Allies Alliance website is we have provided, a, there's a tab called the research tab, and if you click on it, it, it breaks out into a list of all of the major types of cancer. And what we do is we harvest articles from all over the world, all over the, the World Wide Web, yes. on cancer treatments. What's going on where? Right. And it kind of speaks to cutting edge therapies, who's doing the work, and where that work is being done. So that part is very, very that important. Is incredible. It so, is. And well, that was a big part of our journey, right. you know, because we were dealing with a cancer that when we started and, and, and unfortunately when my wife passed, mm -hmm. there was still no prescribed therapy for. Ah, uh -huh. I see, yeah. And so, but whether you're dealing with, with a, a, a fairly well-known documented cancer or whether you're dealing with something that's completely, you know, rare and, and, and 
in our case, there was no prescribed treatment for. You always want to have hope. You always want to be looking for where that work is being done and to find out where the positive indicators are. Right. You know, you want to know who is that guy or who is that woman that's right. doing that work because that's the person we want to connect with. Right, right. So those are the really Im important things is to, be, is to be as proactive, to advocate for yourself. I cannot stress that more, I, I just cannot say that too much. You need to advocate for yourself. And one of the things is, is to find a general oncologist that is really up to date, that is willing to kind of quarterback this whole thing if you allow the, the, the sports analogy. But somebody that's got that big picture that doesn't necessarily have a specific agenda. Yes, I agree with that, 100%. So these are the big things. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So for viewers out there, we have people watching this right now, and right. They, want to, they want to go to the website, maybe even ask some questions, right. get a hold of you, find out how they can be involved. Where would you point them, David? The f first thing I would say is go to the website. The, the website is alliesalliance.org. That is uh, www.alisalliance.org. Uh, that is the, the primary place to go. Uh, there's a contact page as well as our phone number. You can call me personally. Yes. I'm very happy to talk to people. Uh, but essentially the, the major uh, product or deliverable that we offer is the directory and right in the middle of the home page is a search box and you just fill in the, the requested information and uh, hit search now and you're you're off and running um, the if you have questions for me there's a contact page and you can email me okay. uh, info at alliesalliance.org a-l-i-s alliance.org or call me my phone number's on the website I'm, I'm happy to talk to, to anybody oh that's perfect that's you know, perfect that's well you know what we salute you Thank uh, you, so much. you are certainly giving back not just to our community here in South Florida but to the nation and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. One last thing, please like us on Facebook and share it out there. Absolutely. Thank the more you. the merrier. The more, right? the, the more the merrier. You got it. Thank you, you so much. You're this welcome. has been wonderful. It's our pleasure.